I'm Johanna, me my dog books, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would share um, some of the books that I am excited to read from the Women's Prize Long List for Fiction which was announced just the other week at the start of March. So I'll go through, I have my trusty laptop I'll go through the full long list, which I think is 16 books in total. And then there's five that I've chosen to reserve from the library um, because I like the sound of them and my library had them. <laughs> but actually mostly because I like the sound of them. The other ones, um, I'll probably wait and see um, what fellow booktubers are thinking of some of them. So let's get stuck in. Let me know in the comments if any of you, I was very excited about it. Was, was it Tuesday the 6th of March? Is it during the week there? I can't even, what even day is it? Um, did you watch, did you watch it online, the Women's Prize? There are 16 nominees and, deb and debut novelists make up half of the nominees this year. Three Irish authors appear, which is very timely given it being March, St Patrick's Day on the 17th, and obviously a lot of people will be reading Irish authors in the month of March. I'm actually currently reading Cala by Colin Walsh, I think, just now, um, is one of my Irish books for this month. I'm actually reading it for Lauren and the Books Patreon Book Club, which is not next week, but the weekend after. So let me get you the long list. In no particular order. I'll actually I'll put the link for the Women Prize for Fiction in the description below so you can have a look. So a quote from the chair of judges says with strength and vitality of contemporary women's fiction very much in evidence reading the entries for this year's Women's Prize for Fiction has been a joyful experience. Each one of these books is brilliant, original and utterly unputdownable. B -b -b <laughs> Collectively, they offer a wide array of compelling narratives from around the world, written with bare wit, passion and compassion. So I'm going to read the list, then I'll talk about the five I have on reserve at my library and their synopsis. There's Hangman by Mia Binyam, published by One um, Pushkin Press. This is one I've got on reserve, so I'll talk about the synopsis in a wee bit. In Defence of the Act by Effie Black. Uh, I actually wanted to reserve this but couldn't get it in my library yet so this might be one that I pick up at a later date published by Epcock Press. I can put this full list in the description um, and what I can do is maybe link to them on Goodreads uh, or Waterstones or something so you can have a read of each and every one of them. And Then She Fell by Alicia Elliott published by Alan and Unwin. The Wren, The Wren by Anne Enright published by Jonathan Cape. The Maiden by Kate Foster is published by Mantell. Motherless Night by V. V. Hanes and Anthem. It's published by Viking. Restless Dolly Monder by Kate Grenville. And it's published by Canon Gate Books. Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. It's also published by Jonathan Cape. Soldier Sailor by Claire Kilroy. That's published by Faber and Faber. Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster by Mirane Lee, published by Farago. The Blue Beautiful World by Karen Lord, it's published by The Lamps. Western Lane by Chetna Maru, it's published by Picador. Night Bloom is by Peace Adzo Medi, and it's published by One World. Ordinary Human Failings by Megan Nolan, it's also published by Jonathan Cape. River East, River West by Obi Ray Lescure and it's published by Duckworth Books. Last but not least, number 16 in the list of nominees for the Women's Prize for Fiction long list is A Trace of Sun by Pam Williams and it is published by Legend Press. So I will link all of these down below so you can have a wee read check them out, see which ones you fancy. But I'm now going to go through the ones that I've reserved and plan on reading um, before the shortlist is announced, which I think is in June. Um, and through like reading updates or future vlogs or 
videos I'll keep you updated on what I'm thinking of some of the books I'm reading and give you an, uh, an update overall. So the first one that I have reserved is Hangman by Mia Binyam. I'm going to go through these as a synopsis probably uh, like from Goodreads roughly because I can't remember. I be basically when I was watching the women's long list announcement I was frantically on Goodreads and then on the library app <laughs> and quickly like checking what was available and then what their synopsis was to see what I was really interested in. Um, so I've completely forgotten since then so I'm now going to refer to trusty Goodreads for the synopsis. So Hangman is described as that was quite a long synopsis, I won't read it all, I'll kind of summarise it for you. But, an enthralling and original first novel about exile, dispo, uh, diaspora, and the impossibility of black refuge in America and beyond. Oh, sounds right up my right street. In the morning, I received a phone call and that was told to board a flight. The arrangements had been made on my behalf. I packed no clothes because my clothes had been packed for me. A car arrived to pick me up. A man returns home to sub-Saharan -Sahara Africa after 26 years in America. When he arrives, he finds that he doesn't recognise the country or anyone in it. Thankfully, someone recognises him, a man who calls him brother, setting, setting him on a quest to find his real bro brother who is dying. In Hangman, Maya Binyan tells the story of that search and of the phantoms, guides, tricksters, bureaucrats, debtors, taxi drivers, relatives, riddles and strangers that will lead him to the truth. It is described as, well, the genres, fiction, Africa, literary fiction, contemporary. And it came out on August 8th last year. Oh, it's out in paperback this year, which is, which is good for anyone who wants to read it, um, that maybe can't get it in the library or whatever. Um, I'll inter interrupt this important broadcast to take a wee sip of my Pucka 3 mint tea. I've got a sore belly today. I get um, at, like IBS type symptoms, like bloating and uncomfortable stomach, uh, normally due to my anxiety disorder. And normally I could not tell you why. It just happens and it's really uncomfortable. So peppermint tea is my saviour. And after I have this wee chatty chat about books, normally distracting myself with books is another one. But then I might go and do some yoga to help my stomach. Anyway, you didn't come here for my ailments. You came here for book news or chat. Mm, look, a wee Dachshund mug. I think I got that in the local supermarket. It's not quite party, but it's close. Obviously, need to get a bagel one to balance the balance the, the doggos. The next one I have on reserve from my local library is Ordinary Human Failings. Um, it says, when we look beyond the headlines, everyone has a story to tell. Mm. Oh, it's actually by an Irish author. So Megan Nolan's an Irish um, author. I don't know if this is a debut. It came out in summer June last year. Um, it says it's 1990s in London and Tom Hargraves has it all. A burgeoning career as a reporter, fierce ambition and a brisk disregard for the peasants, ordinary people. His readers, easy tabloid fat fodder. His stars look set to rise when he stumbles across a scoop. A dead child on a London estate, grieving parents loved across the neighbourhood and the fingers of suspicion pointing at one reclusive family of Irish immigrants and bad apples, the Greens. At their hearts sit Carmel, beautiful, otherworldly, broken and once destined for a future beyond her circumstances until life and love got in her way. Crushed by failure and surrounded by disappointment, there is nowhere for her to go and no chance to escape. Now, with the police closing in on a suspect and the tabloids hunting their monster, she must confront the secrets and silences that have trapped her family for so many generations. Don't know which one will come in first from the library. My next one um, that I've got in order, Enter the Ghost by Isabella Hamad. A bold, evocative new novel from the Sue Kaufman, Betty Trask and Plimpton Prize Award winner, Isabel Hamad that follows actress Sonia as she returns to Palestine and takes in a role in West Bank production of Hamlet. 
After years away from our family's homeland and reeling from disastrous love affair, actress Sonia Nazir returns to Hafia um, to visit her oldest sister, Hain. Hanin. This is her first trip back since Intifada, Intifada and the deaths of her grandparents. While Hanin made a life here commuting to Tel Aviv to teach at university, Sonia stayed in London to focus on her acting career and now desolate marriage. On her return, she finds her relationship to Palestine is fragile and both bone deep and new. A stunning rendering of present day Palestine Enter the Ghost is a story of diaspora, displacement and the connection to be found in family and shared resistance. I like the sound of that. I have never heard of this. Never heard of this author. Hamad is the author of Parisian, not their first novel. So if any of you have read or heard of any of these novels that I've got either on the long list or that I plan on reading, let me know. Other than if they all come in at once, I don't know which one to read. Otherwise, I'm just reading them as they come in on reserve. The next one, who doesn't love the name of this one? It's called Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster by Mirani Lee. Asian literature it comes under fantasy, magical realism, historical fiction. So <clears throat> joining the acclaimed ranks of Pachinko and A Woman Is No Man. I've read Pachinko, but I've not read the other one. A riveting and genre-bending debut of love and survival set in the demilitarised zone separating North and South Korea. Life near the North Korean border is a zero-sum game, an ongoing battle to which you either win or you lose. This dangerous shadowed netherworld is home to an unforgettable woman known as the only trickster. <laughs> known only as the trickster. Inspired by the story, oh, can you hear the ice cream van? It's rainy and it's cold, but the ice cream van's still going. I'm not going for ice cream. Um, inspired by the story of Lee's great aunt, one of the oldest women to escape alone from North Korea, Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster consists of eight dark and spellbinding chapters that follow this remarkable character and her family as they struggle to survive during the most turbulent times of modern Korean history. Hmm. So if, uh, came out in May last year. That sounds fascinating. I did not know it was based on the author's family history. Swiping away a notification there. You seen it? Um, and last but not least, the fifth book I have in reserve from a local library from the Women's Prize for Fiction's long list is Brotherless Night. Oh, look at this cover. Stunning. Why did I put it on my reserve list? Because of the synopsis. Can I remember it? No, so I'm going to read it to you. In the searing novel, a courageous young woman tries to protect her dream, her dream of becoming a doctor as civil war devastates Sri Lanka. Well, it says it's historical fiction, literary fiction, Asia, and a, and a war story. Set in Jaffna in 1981, 16-year-old Sasha wants to become a doctor, but over the next decade, a vicious civil war tears through her home and her dream spins off course as she sees her four beloved brothers and friend Kay swept up in the mounting violence. Set during the early years of Sri Lankan's three decade civil war, the fact I didn't know that is atrocious. Brotherless Night is a heart rending portrait of a woman's moral journey and a testament to both the enduring impact of war and the bonds of home. Well, that came out in January last year, so I would suspect I suspect you could be able to get it in paperback. I don't know though, this gets lots of quite high ratings on Goodreads. So those are the ones um, I have on reserve. Is there any, do you ever read any of the books from the Women's um, Prize for Fiction long list or do you wait till the short list is announced? Have you ever, have you never read this? Now do you fancy reading? If any of the books that I've shortlisted, shortlisted for my own reading sound of interest, let me know. Um, and given that this month is Women's History Month, um, it's nice to embrace and read and enjoy books 
written by women and also we just had International Women's Day. So being able to read books by women from around the world with different points of view about their struggles, their culture and society. I am so excited about. I am a feminist by day and night. <laughs> anyway, that was my little uh, Women's Prize for Fiction long list summary. Next, I'm hoping to do, because I, d I have mentioned it in a previous video, I haven't done it yet, but I'll hopefully record it next week for going out the following week. So after my usual weekend vlog, unless you're getting bored of them, let me know, um, is recommended cosy reads. Because sometimes when you read books that are like of heavy topics, and most of these, to be fair, are quite heavy topics, in the round, um, sometimes you need a little bit of either middle grade, which I'm reading, or some cosies. So I'll come to you with some cosies. Also, another idea I had would be, um, actually, and it's inspired by the lovely Jen Reading Life, is kind of like a bookish get to know me. So if there was any questions that you want to ask where I could do a video about, um, you know, whether it's the, my favourite non-fiction or favourite authors or anything like that, let me know. Anyway, I'm playing around with ideas in my head, but I welcome all of your thoughts. Once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for every like and comment. And um, you can find me also on Instagram. It's me, my dog and books, TikTok, me, my dog and books, if you're there. Um, and if not, don't worry about it. Just if you like this video or uh, want to carry on watching me ramble on about books, then please like and subscribe and thank you so much for your time and for watching. Mwah! Love yous all pals. Until next time. Bye.